the first thing we're going to look at is the fact that the password no longer works and we're getting invalid password. Now, in this scenario, I do know the password as this was set up just for the demonstration of this video. But in your scenario, you'll be getting invalid username or password. We do need to know our username, but even in that, we're going to be able to look in the databases to find this information. So let's leave the web interface for our Omida software controller, head to Proxmox where it's hosted, select our console for our container, and log into your container. You will need to know the logins for your container in order for this video to work. Once you're logged into your container, you're going to need to install some software. We're going to be installing a control interface for MangoDB. MangoDB is the database that Omida uses for their software SND controller. In order to start this process, we're going to need to insert a GPG key so that we can add the repo to our Ubuntu install in order to finally install the MangoDB shell. I will be copying and pasting these commands as I do most times, but they'll be provided for you in the comments section or description of the video. The first thing we're going to do is use Carl to pull down that GPG key. We're going to answer yes and press enter. Now we're gonna use echo to insert the list into our APT updates or our repositories list so that we'll be able to use APT install to install the software. Then we're going to use update to make sure that we update all the repositories in our system. And finally, we're going to install the user interface tool that will allow us to connect to MangoDB from this container. Finally, we're going to go ahead and connect to our MangoDB database. Now, this isn't the default port, so take note of the port, 27217 instead of 27218. And we should get a screen like this. Now we're gonna go ahead and enter the first command of use space omida, like so, pressing enter, we're switched to the omida database. Now inside of the Omida database, we'll have a bunch of what I'll call folders because I'm unaware of the correct name for them. But the first ones that we're going to look in is called tenant. And we're going to use the dot find command to make sure we look through and find all user accounts in the tenant folder. This is what the command looks like for MangoDB. Pressing enter, we're going to get an output that looks like this. We're interested in the VE user right here. I would suggest going ahead and adding this user object to your notepad, especially this number here if you have other users, as we're going to be interested in this user number. Now we can further go ahead and look at more information about this VE account by searching the user folder now that we know the user account. We can do so with the db user find command with the name and the user account we want to look for inside of curly braces. And here is more information about this account. Now, if you're paying attention, you're going to notice that some of these are adding up the tenant ID and the ID object are going to be identical. This is giving us more pieces of the puzzle for when we actually need to go reset the password. The next thing I'm going to do is run a little script that was written in order to go ahead and search through all of the folders inside of Omida. This isn't necessary at this point because I know what folder, but in the recreation of the processes that were taken for resetting my password, I want to go ahead and show you this script. Here is the script that was run, and we can go ahead and press enter. And it's going to execute that in the collection 
or folder, I am user, we have this information. And this is giving us the password plus the ID object. Now this ID object is going to be important later, even though we have a mask username here, this ID object is going to go ahead and link back to our tenant ID, which then links back to our ID object, which links to our username. So we know right now we're working with the right account of VE here. So the next thing we're going to need to do here is issue some commands that's going to tell our database to change the hashed password right here to a different password. This is what the command looks like. And you can notice that we're referencing the username here that matches our username that matches back to our ID of the correct username. But if you look here, you notice that our hash string itself has changed. And that's because this new hashed password is going to be password, essentially allowing us to reset the password of our MITRE controller. So let's go ahead, press enter, and enter those values. So now that we've entered those values, we should be able to head to our Almida software controller, enter a password of password as seen here, and then press login. And since we entered the correct new password, we're allowed access. Now, since we have a very insecure password, let's go ahead and look at changing settings up here at this user account little figure guy, we can click on his head and click account settings. Account settings is going to prompt us to enter our password. And as we said before, it's password right here. Now that we've entered our password, we're gonna go click on security just as I've done here. And we're gonna enter our current password and whatever we would like our new password to be, as long as it's inside of the security schema. As this is a demo, I'm not going to follow this through, but you would click change and then be asked to log back in and your password would be changed. As you can see, it's extremely easy to reset a password inside of the software controller. So if you're not already doing so, which you're not if you're following this tutorial successfully, I would suggest you go ahead and click your box and set up your two-factor authentication so that you can eliminate this route through resetting your password for anybody else. Now that you've reset your password, regained access to your Amida SDN software controller, and able to issue commands to the rest of your network without resetting all of it, you can go ahead, head back to Proxmox, type in exit, which is going to exit your controller or exit the database of your controller. And you can remove the software that you installed for the creation of this controller. And we're going to do that with two commands, both of them from APT. The first one is going to be purge, the in controller that we installed. We're gonna hit Y, enter, and then we're just going to run the apt auto remove command, which will remove all dependencies for this user interface that we installed for MangoDB. Pressing Y and enter again, this will remove all the dependencies for the Nango DB user interface and your project is done. You now have access back to your Omida SDN network controller. You're able to make network configurations, monitor logs, and do other fun projects inside of your Omida network, which I enjoy very much and hope you're enjoying as well. As always, I hope you enjoyed this great tutorial from Virtualize Everything, and you're able 
to now successfully gain access to your network controller. Have a good night and consider liking, sharing, and subscribing to get more home lab tutorials and Proxmox related content. Have a good night.